Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're in my garage so excuse the echo but I want to make a 20 meter antenna out of lamp cord wire and it's really cold and wet outside so I'm going to do it in my garage today. I got an ICOM IC7300 a few days ago and I'm really excited to try out HF radio and do things like WS, JTX, FT8, um, that kind of stuff because as I've found in my area two meter and 70 centimeter and things that a technician license can use is very empty. So I'm excited to do HF and get out there where I can really reach out. I did test it out before this video, but I wanted to make a video showing how I did it. And there are other YouTubers who's made this antenna as well, uh, but I wanted to share my take on it and share my experience with it and some of the contacts that I've been able to make uh, since I've been able to do it all over the world. It costs way less than going and buying an antenna and it's things that I kind of already had local or sitting around rather than having to wait four to five days for an antenna to come in. Uh, most antennas I looked at like this was up in the $300 range. This antenna may cost you less than $100 if you have some parts laying around or you're able to find some cheap wire somewhere. Um, like I say, we're gonna, I'm going to use lamp cord or lamp wire. Uh, like what you see in the old lamps, a little two wire cord. Uh, you can use anything. Now I have read that it's supposed to be at least 14 gauge and mine is not 14 gauge. So I'm gonna have to fix that later down the road. For my purposes, it's working and it's working well. Let's jump right into how to make this and feel free to reach out in the comments if you have any questions. Um, again, I'm not an expert in this. This is just how I got started because I got my radio before I got an antenna. So I wanted to quickly the same day use my, use my radio and get out on the HF without actually owning an antenna. It was a radio that I found locally and used that I got a good deal on. So I wanted to hurry up and get that antenna so I could get out quickly. As we all know, there is someone out there who's an expert, and I'm definitely not an expert. Um, there are ways to make this antenna way better and function better and get better SWR and get better receive. Um, again, today I'm just trying to make an antenna that I can get on the air with quickly, and I've actually been using it out, and it seems to be working very well. So, so there are much better ways to make this antenna and make it better, but today I'm just showing you how I quickly got on the air with my new radio. So let's jump right into making this antenna and show you how I did it and get out there in HF. All right, so I'm gonna show some of the equipment that I'm gonna to use today. Um, again, so I'm, I'm gonna use this wire. Uh, it's called, you can pick this up from Home Depot. You can pick it up from Amazon. Um, it's, it was actually cheaper at Amazon for me. Um, it's called Lamp Wire, made by Southwire. And I'll have links to all this stuff in the description below. Um, there will be affiliate links and it does help my channel um, if you use my affiliate links. So this Lamp Wire here, it's got two leads to it. Uh, it's basically just two sides. And you can actually cut this wire and be able to split it. And that's how I'm gonna get my two different legs to my antenna. So it's actually, it's really simple to make. Um, and then I have these banana to BNC adapters allow me to hook up the wire onto these banana adapters. Uh, so I hook the wire up to this and then it allows me to, to just plug the wire right into this right here. And this makes the connection to my radio. So I'm actually going to use part of this wire as a feed line. Uh, my understanding is it works like a ladder coax wire. Uh, I don't know how efficient it is, but again, I'm making contacts all across the world. So I think it works good enough for my purposes as of right now. Needs some type of a tape measure. Um, I have the Milwaukee 30 foot, any of them works, but I prefer the 30 foot because some of these measurements will be beyond 12 foot and it gets ridiculous to try to make the 12 foot measurement three times, but you can use any, uh, any tape measure you want, but these measurements need to be pretty close to accurate. This little tool set right here um, by Klein Tools, I actually got it at, uh, you can get it at Home Depot or Amazon or Lowe's. It's got all these miniature little bits and these work for just about anything with small electronics. Um, this has been one of the handiest tool kits I've had as far as the, 
a screwdriver goes and the bits. So I highly recommend picking this up. Uh, again, all the, the link to this and all these tools are in my description below. Definitely gonna need some black tape, which you probably all already have. And if you don't, uh, you can get this anywhere, Walmart, Amazon, Home Depot, Dollar Tree, believe it or not. And that's all the tools that we'll need today. The first thing we're gonna need to do today is actually get a calculator and calculate the distance. Um, I know I want to do this on 20 meters and I want to do this on FT8. I want that to be the center of my focus. So uh, I punch that information in on there, uh, the megahertz, and it'll ac actually calculate out uh, each of these measurements here. I, I'm in feet. Um, so A, one thing that I didn't realize at first is A here is actually uh, the entire length. So since we're using lamp wire and cutting it in half, we need to split that we need to split the 32.5 feet in half. That way we have both sides. So the angles and things like that make a difference, but we're gonna make an inverted V antenna. And that's one of the easiest antennas that I've found to make, uh, that you can actually just use a few things you have laying around to, to get it started. So since it says 32.5 feet, we're gonna go to a calculator and we're gonna divide that in half. So we need to do about 16 feet and four inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll out the tape measure for 16 feet. All right, so I have the tape measure spread out 16 feet, 17 feet actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll some of this out. And I found it easier if you black tape the end. All right, so I've got the end black tape. Now I'm just gonna roll the wire out. I've got the wire rolled out, so now it's 16 feet, four inches. I'm gonna take a little bit of black tape and roll it around the wire. That way I know where the 16 feet and four inches are. It's at 16 feet and four inches, and I just rolled some black tape here. Um, that'll actually allow me to spread the two leads out on the wire without spreading it out too far. And worst case, if I end up needing to make it just a little bit longer for some reason, then I can just move this black tape down six inches or so and be able to, and take that out and spread it out. And then you can actually extend your antenna. Another thing that I like to do is give myself plenty of length. Uh, that way it acts as a coax cable and I can just hook my radio right up to it. Um, if you plan on being out in the field with this antenna and being close, then the shorter you make this, probably the better. But you do want it to be long enough where it can reach your radio uh, comfortably. So at this point, I'm going to go get the wire, the end of the wire. I'm going to cut the end off and I'm going to split it. And I'm going to stop at the 16 foot 4 inch mark. And then that will actually be the V part of the antenna. Okay, so at this point, I have the antenna 16 foot 4 inches long. I'm gonna cut, splice this part right here, and from there, I should be able to just pull this wire out. So, I'm gonna pull this wire till I hit that black tape so that I know that that's the 16 foot, four inch mark. At this point, I've hit the 16 foot, four inch mark, and I stopped tugging on it right there. Um, this, this is one part of my antenna, and this is, one part's the ground and one part's the hot the transmit. All right, so now I have the end of the wire here. I'm going to cut a little piece of it here and to keep that from splitting, I'm gonna add just a little bit of tape here because we don't want that to split any more than it needs to. That way it keeps the, like a ladder wire, it holds it together. Now I'm going to, gonna strip just a little piece of this. All right, so now we have our coax wire right here, just gonna slip. We're gonna take these right here and slide that on one side and slide this on the other side. Gonna take my tool set here. I'm just gonna unscrew these and feed these in and tighten them back, tighten them good. Uh, so if there's ever any strain on your antenna wire, it doesn't break it off. And slide these back. And then take your banana to B and C and plug them in. And bam, you've got an antenna. 
This can plug right into your radio. Um, I always adapt everything to BNC because it makes it really easy to plug and unplug. Um, now the real question is, how is the SWR on this? And the SWR is going to be off a whole lot because we don't have it up yet. Alright, so as you see the SWR is reading about 4. Um, the way we have it set right now, the SWR is going to be really far off. Uh, so we're going to go get that back in the garage and see if we can get it hung up and set up like we would if we was going to transmit on it. So for actually getting your antenna up in the inverted V position, I'm going to use this little tripod that I have set in here. Um, our app said that it needs to be about six foot high, the center does. So this little tripod goes a little bit over six feet. Might be a little low. Um, it might throw our SWR off a little bit. But, uh, you know, th this is about what you have on hand, not necessarily how to make it perfect. So I'm going to use this little tripod um, for the center, and I'm probably just going to tape off the ends for the video. Uh, for outside, I actually have some rods. They also recommend using some end things that you can actually tie a string to and pull it tight. Uh, that kind of insulates it from the rod. Um, again, I'm just using what I have on hand here, what I know, what I have. Later on, I may buy those things and make this better, but I just want to get on HF uh, with my new radio. So I'm going to go ahead and extend this out to the as far as it'll go. That's six foot seven inches, which is perfect. So I'm going to get my antenna out. I'm going to find the pieces. I've already got it knotted up. I do recommend having a good way to put it up. Uh, whenever you go to travel because if this becomes a knotted mess you're going to spend most of your time trying to unknot it. So I have one end over here. All right. I'm going to lower this while I work just so I don't have to reach over my head. But I'm going to actually tape using some quick black tape that I have sitting around. And if you don't have black tape you need to get that on your hand because you will be doing a lot with black tape uh, the more you mess with ham radio. I'm just going to tape this the center of my antenna. Don't have to be super good to, to accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish here. Um, I'll raise it back up. And there's the center of our antenna. So you're starting to see the V shape already probably. Uh, so we basically just hang these pieces out to the sides. Uh, if you have some rods, it's good to put some rods on the end. Uh, for me, I'm just going to tape them. So as you see, I have a V shaped antenna at this point. Um, to my understanding, this is called a center-fed half-wave antenna, and we, and we have our coax connector here. So let's hook this up to the antenna analyzer and see what our SWR is. So as of right now, our SWR is 8.6, which is actually worse than it was before when it was just bundled up. Hey, so it's a couple days later. I uh, brought the antenna outside. It's been bad weather the last few days. and. Today it's about 34 degrees. But I got the antenna up. Um, I was able to get a much better SWR reading. I was really struggling in the garage. But the sides of my antenna was actually touching the concrete. And I later found out that that was messing with my SWR. I was getting an SWR of about 10 to 12. Which my tuner can only handle up to 3 built into my ICOM 7300. Uh, so I brought it out here to see if that was the problem and sure enough I got it out here I got it set up and I'm now getting a 1.7 SWR 1.5 SWR around in there um, Which again is plenty of playroom for my antenna to be able to tune so This antenna is working perfect um, I'm going to show you a few parts of it here and what I ended up doing just to give you an idea of how I did this I went and found some half inch PVC pipe and hammered it in the ground just enough for it to hold and I wrapped a loop around my wire and taped it a little bit and that made a loop on the end of my antenna where I could hook right into that PVC pipe. There are much better ways to do this, but this way seemed to function very well. I couldn't even get a good SWR reading until I got it up off the ground and using this loop. So this loop for me works great. Um, you might have to trim a little wire or add a little wire. Um, and by adding wire, I mean just separate it an extra couple inches at a time until you get a better SWR. This antenna seems to be working well. If you don't have any PVC pipe like I do, you can just use those tent stakes that come with a camping tent and stretch a wire out and wrap it to the wire and to that. And you can actually separate it via that insulated wire. 
and that should work plenty good. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, again, let me know any tips or tricks you might have that helps you get on the air or that might make this antenna better. There are several other videos out there about this topic if you're interested and want to learn more. Be sure to check them out and check out my description box below. You can find links to a majority of the things that I used in this video.